touted as March badness for obvious reasons, Lennox Lewis and Shannon Briggs engaged in a unification bout for the Lineal and WBC titles. It was a slugfest that saw Briggs take the fight to Lewis only to be outsmarted and overwhelmed mid-fight by a calculated lion. Once again, Lewis proved more than capable under fire. For all those who say he doesn't have a chin, again, check here. He was now the unified lineal and WBC heavyweight champion, and the boxing world looked toward a unification bout with unified WBA IBF champion Evander Holyfield. WBO titleist Herbie Hyde returned and vanquished Damon Reed in record time. No, seriously, it was a record for a heavyweight title bout how fast Hyde stopped Reed. 52 seconds, beating out James J. Jeffries 1900 victory over Jack Finnegan. There was one knockdown to which Reed rose and was cut. The referee looked to second guess himself in letting Reed continue and looked to separate the men before Hyde could further dissect his victim. As addressed by the announcers, the WBO should have been questioning their own legitimacy by sanctioning this sort of fight. The WBO seemed to be out for the opposite of legitimacy. If you're going to build a fight as the power and the glory, it's got to live up to said title. And this fight did not do as such. Evander Holyfield defended the WBA and IBF titles against challenger Von Bean in a less than impressive effort. Though he'd won the unanimous decision after dropping Bean in the 10th, Holyfield's age was beginning to show. Clearly, He'd fallen off from his impressive second run that was highlighted against Mike Tyson and Michael Moore, an unfortunate reality heading into potential unification. Uh, was Vaughn being the metaphorical sign of things going down for champions who fought him? First Moore, now Holyfield looking worse? Nah, I'm just being dramatic. Also, the post-fight interviews in the ring, once again, had Butch Lewis stealing the show, this time so profoundly that Jim Gray shifted the broadcast from the ring interviews. Lewis was upset at the referee for how he handled Holyfield knocking Bean down. They exchanged some words face to face too. WBO champion Herbie Hyde was back. This time, a repeat of the Tony Tucker matchup as he won by three knockdown rule over Willie Fisher in the second round. Hyde slipped to the canvas himself going for the kill after the first knockdown. On the undercard of the Battle of the Giants, David Tua continued his comeback dominance with a first round demolition of Eric Curry. In the main event, unified heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis took on challenger Zelko Maverich. It was a well-contested bout that saw Lewis almost exhaust himself as Maverich took the best he had to offer. The challenger never managed any meaningful offense despite this, and Lewis won a lopsided unanimous decision over Zelko. Rumors swirled on if the unification bout was next. The contract was signed on November 24th for an early 1999 date. Dr. Stillhammer had accumulated an impressive undefeated streak coming into this bout with journeyman Ross Purity. He was largely expected to continue said run, but Purity shocked all by surviving Glad's dominance over 10 rounds. He floored and exhausted Vlad in the 10th after the Olympic gold medalist neglected to pace himself. Klitschko survived the round, but his corner stopped the fight in the 11th as Purity was battering their fighter. It was a stunning derailing of the young star's career. Purity rejected a rematch offered two years later 
and instead faced Vlad's brother Vitaly on December 8, 2001. He was stopped by Dr. Iron Fist in 11 rounds. In an IBF heavyweight title eliminator, David Tua took on Haseen Rockman. Rockman managed to outbox Tua and keep him at bay for the majority of the fight. In the ninth, Tua hit Rockman with a left hook after the bell that he never recovered from. But don't get it twisted, it wasn't a dirty play by Tua. Tua would finish him in the 10th, and once again his power had bailed him out of a potential loss. The comeback of the Tua Minator continued strong. They would rematch five years later to a draw. Rockman knocked Tua down at the very end of the fight, but the knockdown didn't count. Feels unfair considering how the first fight was shaped by a shot after the bell. The fight was called a split decision draw. To conclude 1998, these were Ring Magazine's top 10 ranked heavyweights. Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis stood above the pack and were scheduled to determine who the real king of the jungle was. Upset of the year easily goes to Ross Purity and his shocker over Vladimir Klitschko. The family name took a bit of a hit, especially considering that this was Vlad's first fight in front of his home country. The fourth round of Lewis Briggs is taking round of the year. After surviving an onslaught in the earlier rounds, Lewis recuperated well and dropped Briggs twice in the fourth while still taking some of the best Briggs had to offer. Again, this one's for all of you that don't think Lewis has a chin. The slugfest between Lennox Lewis and Shannon Briggs is taking the fight of the year award. Lewis weathered the storm well to secure the victory. In a clean sweep of the awards, Lennox Lewis tops the year as its best fighter. He was aging like fine wine and looking primed heading into the new year. While Mike Tyson was away from the sport, he did some work with the World Wrestling Federation, appearing at WrestleMania 14. Remember, he was originally supposed to appear back in 1990, but Tokyo Douglas happened. In May, Tony Tucker had his last bout in a first round knockout win over Billy Wright. On July 4th in Australia, as mentioned in a timeline of the 1970s heavyweight boxing division, Joe Bugner would become the oldest champion up to that point when he beat James Bone Crusher Smith for the WBF title. On December 9th, the boxing world lost Archie Moore. When you look up longevity in the dictionary, there's a picture of the old mongoose. No explanation, just a picture. Moore's career will be covered in greater detail down the line here on Boxingpedia. Overall, 1998 inched a bit closer to answering the ultimate question who's the best heavyweight in the world and of this generation. 1999 was guaranteed to have the answer as Lewis and Holyfield agreed to fight for all the marbles.